There have been a lot of headlines about psychedelics which describe how transformative and healing they can be for existing conditions like trauma and PTSD. But in this video, I'm going to talk about if they can help in times of immediate crisis, like when something serious happens in your personal life and the shit has completely hit the fan. And this is something I've been interested in since the start of this channel, because for me, the purpose of using psychedelics is to bring positive experiences which can improve my day-to-day -day human experience. But if all that crumbles away the minute we're confronted with an actual crisis, then it raises a question of whether they actually facilitated a long-term transformation, or was it just that we felt good because we got high and were living in a temporary afterglow? And I feel I'm qualified to talk about this because for the first half of this year, I have been going through just such a crisis, which is why I've been keeping a low profile and haven't posted anything on my channel for about the last nine months until I could get my life back in order. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what actually happened to me during this period, why I've been inactive from the psychedelic community, and my thoughts about whether my previous experience with psychedelics had any benefit in helping me to navigate this situation. Now, for anyone who is not so interested in my personal crisis, which is completely understandable, I'll leave a timestamp below so you can just jump ahead to the bit where I actually start talking about psychedelics. But for anyone else, my name is Rob, this is Adepta Psychonautica, and let's get into it. Okay. So it feels like there's a bit of a cliche here on YouTube that at some point in a channel's life, the creator is going to look directly at the audience in an earnest and heartfelt way and say, hey, hey guys, it's time we had a talk. And usually this will be accompanied by like a cup of coffee just to show that this is extra sincere. Now that's not really my style, but I did want to show off this fine DMT elf mug, which my mate Harry Pack sent me. And this seems to be a good way of crowbarring it in. So I'll leave a link to his website below if you want to pick up your own hyperspace themed drinking vessel. But for now, cheers, Harry. So anyway, the reason I'm making this part of the video is not because I think I'm so important that the world needs to hear the details of my personal shitstorm or that the psychedelic community has grown to a halt in my absence, but rather that there are people who have messaged me during this period expressing concern and asking if I'm okay. And to those people, I wanted to say thank you for your support. In particular, to the awesome folks who support me on Patreon, who've continued donating even though there's been a complete drought of content. And so for all you guys, and honestly anyone who follows the channel, I feel that some explanation is owed. And further to that, I just feel like I need to say this as some sort of like psychic exorcism to myself, just so I can get this shit out, put it behind me, and get back to making hopefully entertaining videos about psychedelics. So here is what happened. So any of you guys who've been following this channel will be familiar with my other half, Rachel. She's been in a few of the videos. We've been together as a couple for 23 years now. And that means that we've seen some shit together and we've come through it together. Now, it's not any big secret that Rachel has a severe struggle with anorexia. And we've talked about it quite openly here on the channel. Although her anorexia has gone through relapses and remissions throughout our 23 years together, Rachel's always managed to keep it under control, but it's been an ongoing battle for her. Throughout 2022, Rachel's anorexia escalated severely. So she was in an extreme state of malnutrition. And I want to really make the point here, this was serious. Now, I'm not going to share any pictures of what the kind of state that Rachel was in, but there are some publicly available pictures online of people with chronic anorexia, and let's just say that we were within this kind of ballpark. And to see someone you love in this kind of state is fucking terrifying. Now, further to this, due to the seriousness of Rachel's illness and the extreme anxiety that she had around food, she was prescribed benzodiazepines as an anti-anxiety medication to help her deal with it. And this led to her becoming physically dependent on the benzos and suffering severe withdrawal symptoms if she tried to come off them. And I do mean severe. Now, as a result of the anorexia and the benzo addiction, she underwent some drastic changes in her personality with wild mood swings and just generally uncharacteristic behavior. It was like I was dealing with a completely different person. I was getting to a point where I just didn't recognize her anymore. She was just so numb from these benzodiazepines. It seemed like she didn't care. And myself and our family were facing the very real possibility 
that Rachel might die. Finally, because she was so ill and malnourished, then her body just stopped being able to cope and she started having seizures. And it just seemed like we're on the cusp of losing her. Now, as I mentioned, Rachel has had anorexia pretty much all her life and she's always managed to pull herself out of it. But it became obvious that this was something else entirely and that we needed help, professional help. So we went to the doctor, we got assigned some specialists and the long story short is that Rachel was hospitalized for several months. Now, I appreciate that unless you are familiar with eating disorders, you might not fully understand just how destructive they can be both to the person who's going through it, but also to the people in proximity who love that person. Because you're basically watching someone starving themselves to death while living in complete denial that there's anything wrong with them. You know, I could say it's like brutal, it's maddening, it's infuriating, it's lonely, it's hopeless. But honestly, words don't even come close. So that's the basic outline of what happened. And as you can probably imagine, it was a very complex and emotionally turbulent period. And so I just needed to give 100% of my attention to Rachel, to my kids, and also to myself, just to try and get us all through this. So hence this channel, along with a lot of other things in my life, have just been on the shelf for the last nine months. But I'm happy to report that we seem to be through the worst of it. Rachel's back home now, she's eating normally, she's completely detoxed from the benzos, she's gaining weight and she's working through her issues. Now obviously with something as severe as what I've described, it takes time to fully heal, but things are looking a lot better than they were at the beginning of the year. So it's been rough, but I think we're out of the worst of it. And again, I want to say a huge sincere thank you to everyone who has supported us through this time, especially the guys on Patreon, the community over on Discord, and anyone who's taken the time to listen to this story. Going forward, I am starting to feel more creative. I'm gonna start picking things up and making content for the channel and just being active again in the psychedelic community. And I'm really looking forward to interacting with all you guys again and have some great discussions about psychedelics. And on that note, let's see how I can relate this tale of personal crisis into the world of psychedelics. So back to my original question of, does the experience we gain from psychedelics actually help with dealing with the crisis in the present, like right now when the shit hits the fan? And my answer is a somewhat cryptic yes and no, but in the bigger picture, yes. And let me take a moment to explain what I mean by that. I'll start with the no part. Now, I don't think it's controversial to say that psychedelics widen our bandwidth for how we interpret events happening in our lives and how those events sit with us on an emotional and psychological level, which leads to an overall change in perspective. Now, for the most part, I would say that this enhanced bandwidth is a positive, but there are situations where it might become overwhelming. You know, pre-psychedelics, people can be somewhat emotionally or psychologically blinkered, so they're only interpreting things through a certain narrow filter, and they can become very entrenched within the worldview that those blinkers provide. But then after we take psychedelics, we suddenly see those blinkers are removed and we start seeing things from all kinds of new perspectives, which is part of the magic of what these substances have to offer, a different way of looking at the world and our place within it. The blinkers come off, our spectrum of experience widens, and suddenly we start to see whole new realms of possibility. Now, the downside to this is that that improved capability for receiving experience isn't exclusive to things that are positive. It works both ways. So when the shit hits the fan, you suddenly have an extraordinary new palette of ways to imagine how completely fucked you are. And the emotional floodgates are wide open, so you find yourself reacting a lot more viscerally to events that you might have pre-psychedelics. Now, this is part of why bad trips feel so bad because you're just open on every level. And so if a negative experience sneaks in there, then it can be amplified into something that can feel truly horrific. You can see this demonstrated by the various anecdotes that you might have seen online from people expressing deep regret that they had ever taken ayahuasca or mushrooms or whatever the substance was, because they believed that they were more capable of handling things prior to taking the substance and that doing so has made them less capable and so the end result is for them to feel worse, or I would argue they are feeling more and they are perceiving that more as worse. And there is some truth in this, 
that unlocking of the doors of perception can be overwhelming. And once that door's open, it isn't easy to get it shut again. And I'm not just talking about the period when you are feeling under the effect of the substance, because as many of you will know, these things do fundamentally change you. So if you're walking around already feeling wide open with what you think are your emotional defenses down, and then some kind of crisis occurs, yeah, sometimes it's just too much. So that covers the no part of my answer. Now let's unpack the yes part. I think of psychedelics as a kind of spiritual gym or training discipline with which we can learn lessons that help us with our everyday lives. After all, if you can handle having your entire sense of being disintegrated into the fractal chaos of hyperspace, then what can't you handle? Now that doesn't mean that you don't feel the impact of these crisis situations, because after all, we are human beings, but it does give you a broader set of tools with which to work through the problem. Now, I want to be clear here that I am talking about using past psychedelic experience to guide present situations. I'm not necessarily advocating that people should be taking mind-altering substances at the same time as that you are going through one of these crises, because, and hopefully this goes without saying, these are the time, these are the times that you need to be focused, have your head on straight, and not be lost in thought contemplating how DMT elves are trying to communicate with us through chat GPT. And that's been my mindset as I've gone through my personal crisis, and I haven't touched anything since New Year, which is probably my longest sober period in the last 30 years. And while it's been good to take a bit of a break, I am looking forward to getting back on the hyperdimensional horsey. So, in the big picture, I think that psychedelic experiences can indeed be good for helping us to deal with whatever life throws at us. Yes, it can feel overwhelming at times, Yes, it can feel like you were stronger before and you regret lowering your emotional defenses. But just like any form of training, it can be tough and painful, but overall the experience can be positive. I would make the case that although these moments feel overwhelming, they aren't actually overwhelming. It's just that you are experiencing stuff you're not used to. But the fact that you are experiencing it is a positive because that is how we process things. Now, when something occurs which has a major impact on us, we are supposed to feel it. We're supposed to work through it, resolve it. That's just the kind of creatures that we are. Now, of course, we can avoid feeling such an uncomfortable amount of raw feeling, either by burying it deep within our psyches or taking a pharmaceutical solution which will suppress it. But sooner or later, that shit is going to catch up with us. As Newton said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So all that emotional energy doesn't just disappear, it sits and festers. So the sooner you can deal with it, and the more capable you can become at dealing with it, the better. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience. I'm looking forward to getting back into this and honestly having to relearn how to use all this shit. It's kind of amazing how much you forget in nine months, which is why I've not done all the cosmic camper van background stuff this time. But I'm sure it'll be back sometime in the future, and I will see you guys again next time on Adeptus Psychonautica.